In this video, we're going to be going over all of the chat commands that are available here in Fantasy Grounds Classic. Um, I am currently using the 5th edition rule set, but uh, all of these commands should be available no matter what rule set you are using. So the very first thing here we've got our chat window is uh, to use the slash help command, slash H-E-L-P, and hit enter, and that will show all of the different commands that are available for you to use. So we're going to go through these and uh, take a look and see what uh, each of them do. Now we're not going to go through in alphabetic order. Uh, we are going to instead go through them thematically. So the first one, before I, I do anything else, is the slash clear command. Clear allows you to clear out the chat. If it gets too cluttered, you can just clear it out. Again, we'll jump back to slash help and uh, take a look at some of these. So the first set of commands that uh, I want to demonstrate here is the dice rolls. So the dice rolls can be done first off with the slash die command. This allows you to roll some number of dice. So you just put in a dice string. So for example, 3d6. If you just and then hit enter, it will go ahead and roll that 3d6 and give you a value. You can include any kind of modifiers to it. 3d6 or 6 minus 2 and it will go ahead and apply those as well. If you include a text description, it will incorporate that as well. So you can see here now it's included that term acid that I that I wrote in the uh, after the uh, the dice string. So that's a variety of different dice commands you can do. Now before we go any further, um, all of these chat commands can be typed first. 3D6, and then before you hit enter, they can be added to your shortcut bar for easy access. So you can type any of them and then use them directly from the shortcut bar. And that's going to be true for all of these different chat commands. So that's our die. The second one I want to talk about is mod. So slash mod allows us to put in a, uh, a value, a modifier value. So I could type in slash mod and then do, uh, I believe it's the number first. And then you can see that four that I added in was added down here to the modifier stack. If I then roll something, it's going to add that modifier that I added. And I used the word hello, so it included that as well. If I just do slash mod and then a number, I can do one or more. and it will stack them all up, all to be used at the next dice roll. Next up is the slash roll on, slash R-O-L-L-O-N. This allows us to roll on a table that's defined here in our tables. So you can take any of these tables and uh, type it in. So let's say carousing, we want to, to have that. We can do roll on, C-A-R-O-U-S-I-N-G and it will automatically roll on that table and give me the output. Um, so again, that might be something you want to uh, save to your shortcuts. If you're going to be using a table frequently, you can just save it down there and automatically roll on it when you click on it. So those are the various dice ones. Next up is the chat modes. So there's first one I'm going to display is actually just for the players, and that's a slash action. So when the GM does it, it doesn't really do anything. Slash A action, uh, and then type in hello, it doesn't really do anything. But when it's done on a player's table, it changes the formatting a little bit. And uh, I'll type in action, hello there. And you can see here the test character typed in hello there, and uh, it changes the format to indicate, you know, what their intended action is. Um, you can also do slash story. This is for the GM. And it changes the output. So normally when you type something in the chat, it'll appear as if, you know, it, it's been said by, uh, by something. Let me select the GM here. Um, and, you know, I can appear here, I type it in, and it appears to be said by the GM. If I do slash story, it appears as if I were outputting from a story entry. 
and so the formatting is different. Now this is the same as it appears if I have a story entry open and I have a, a chat fr frame here and I can output to that and it looks the same. If I have a speaker set, then it looks different. If I have a speaker set, then it, it appears to have been said by the speaker. Uh, we also have the emote slash E or E-M-O-T-E. -E. And uh, that looks very similar to the action. It's a way of indicating what you are doing, a feeling or an action. It's, it's kind of the same as uh, the action one. There is the slash OOC for out of text. Uh, so this is something that you can use to indicate that you're speaking as the player, not as the character. Uh, again, it just changes the formatting that's, that's in use. Uh, next up is the mood command. So mood allows you to set a mood uh, for the things that you are saying. So for example, let's say you have a, uh, an NPC that is, that is nervous. You can type slash mood, type the, the name you know, of the, the condition nervous, and then some kind of uh, chat message. Hello, can you help me? And when you do that, you can see that it incorporates nervous in parentheses next to the name um, to try and give it a feel for what, uh, what mood is currently there. In between players and the GM and between players and each other, you can also whisper to one another. These are the chat uh, messages back and forth between players and the GM. So there's two ways that you can do so. Uh, to whisper to one another, you can either type slash W or slash whisper, and then the character's name. So in this case, I'm going to whisper something to test character. And I'll send hello to the test character. Now, if the character's name is long or complicated or annoying, uh, you can always just right click on their portrait and click whisper and then type your message. Uh, and that'll allow you to easily whisper. To whisper to the GM, players would just type slash W GM hello. Now this is not going to do anything because I'm sending it from the GM to the GM. Uh, but that's how it would uh, send the whisper. Now if you've received a whisper, say the player sends you a whisper. So I just received a whisper from test care. I can you reply without having to retype in that character's name. I can hit slash R hello back and it will remember who the last whisper it received from and send a message back to them so it can go back and forth um, to keep those uh, messages going easily yeah. all right uh, next up is the uh, miscellaneous kind of chat command so I'm going to clear this e out and uh, I want to mention the vote command. So vote allows us to ask the players each a question, kind of a yes or no answer, and allow each player the opportunity to input their value here on the chat. I use this sometimes for, you know, when the play game takes a brief pause and everybody comes back from a break, I can do something like slash vote. Everybody ready to play. So it's just slash vote and then a text message. And when you put that in, each player that is connected will have one of these little circles appear for them. So there may be two, three, or four, depending on how many players that you have. And each player will have the option on their uh, chat to either mark it as checked, mark it as no, or clear it out and leave it blank. Um, and this is just an easy, quick way to, to indicate, yeah, everybody's ready to go, um, or anytime when you need to have everybody vote on a particular topic. Now, in a previous video, we covered the mood lighting, which is available here, uh, day, night, and campfire in kind of a forest. We do have a couple of chat commands that we can use um, if the mood lighting buttons uh, are cumbersome. So the first off is slash day. That's useful. Um, this is the default day setting, so we, typing it now wouldn't do anything. But if I do the other slash night, it will go ahead and apply that mood lighting to our entire desktop. Uh, and then back to day, um, using the day and night commands. 
Now there is a third command that gives you a little bit more flexibility and control, and that's the slash lighting, L-I-G-H-T-I-N-G. Uh, the slash lighting command allows you to specify the color that's going to be used. Um, and it does this using the RGB hex value. So RGB standing for red, green, blue. It's a six character uh, number code using hexadecimal. So the first two characters are the red value and each number goes from zero to F. So zero through nine, A through F. Um, and then, then the higher the number, the, the more emphasis on the red. So let's say we'll put in something that's one F for red. I'm gonna have no green, so I'll have zero, zero. And uh, then I wanna have kind of a pale-ish blue. So let's do something like one, five for blue. So a little bit of red, no green, and a little bit of blue should end up something slightly purplish. All right, that's quite dark purple, uh, but uh, you can play around with those numbers and there's numer uh, numerous websites which will allow you to mess around with those values and get something that works for you. Uh, we can restore that again, just slash day. That is hardly visible at all on the recording, isn't it? Be aware that when you change the colors like this, a lot of the chat win uh, commands and windows and stuff might become very difficult to see. So be, be careful when you are playing around with the lighting. The next couple of commands re revolve around the GM's identity. Now by default, every time the GM says something, it, uh, it's prefixed with the GM moniker. This is the GM's ID. Now, normally that's set when you create or load the campaign. There's a little uh, window uh, field there that you can fill out for what the GM is going to be called. If you want to change that while you're in the game, you can just do slash GM ID and then whatever you want to be called. So we'll change my GM ID to awesome guy. Now once I do that, if I type in hello again, it's now appearing to come from awesome guy. Now this is just for, for the defaults GM ID. I'm gonna change it back to GM here and that'll reset that. Now the second command is the slash identity command. This allows us to temporarily assume different identities. So for example, let's say I wanna pretend I'm speaking as Bob. I can do slash identity Bob. And you can see that that's now created this little Bob character here in the bottom. And if I say hi, it's gonna be said from Bob. And I can create multiple of these Bob, Larry, and uh, I can switch back and forth between them using my mouse, and I can, you know, speak whoever I want to speak as. If I want to clear them out, I just right-click them and remove, and I can remove any speakers that I'll no longer be using. All right, let's go to some miscellaneous functions here. These are not necessarily going to be used as frequently. So let's clear that out. First up is the console. Uh, the console is not typically used by the DM. Um, it is more frequently used by rule set developers and extension developers. Now what it does is it opens up the Fantasy Grounds console, which as you can see here, uh, pops up and it has information that rule set developers and extension developers want to be able to see value. So they use this during the debugging process, development process, to kind of see what's going on. If errors are raised, they'll appear here on the console, and that can give them clues as to where problems are uh, within their code. Um, so the console is generally used by the rule set developers and extension developers, not so much by typical GMs and players. The next one, which is also related to the uh, developers um, is the slash reload command. Now, one limitation on the reload command is you cannot use reload if there is a player connected. Uh, so make sure there are no players connected. What reload does is it forces Fantasy Grounds to reload your campaign and reload all of the rule set files and reload any extensions. So this has the effect of if I'm developing something, for example, if I'm developing a rule set, and I make a tweak to how that rule set behaves, 
I can use slash reload to automatically reload it without having to quit Fantasy Grounds and then restart Fantasy Grounds. Uh, similarly, if I'm working on an extension and I have that extension enabled, I can tweak my extension, save my files, and then click reload and it will go ahead and reload everything. So when you do that, you can see here it pops back out to the, the loading window, reloads all of the information from the rule set and extensions that are that are enabled. And after a minute, it takes a little bit. It's going to go ahead and reopen that campaign. And we're back into the, the reopened campaign. Next up is the export function uh, command. Now, export allows us to export all of the information that we've created for this campaign into our own module. So this could be done either for a module that you're wanting to distribute, that you want to sell uh, on Dungeon Masters Guild or, or one of these other websites or post for free on any of the forums. Uh, you just type in slash export and that'll pop up the export window. Fill out all of the required information, select what information you're going to export, and then just click export. And that will actually do the export, create the module for you. Next up is our export care function. Export care, if you do it just by itself with no character named, it will attempt to export all of the player characters that are defined here in this campaign. So it'll export all of them and asks you where to save them as an XML file. So you can see here, you can change it over to, to wherever you want. I'll name this as the test export care file, and it's gonna save all of the characters that I have loaded. If you specify the name of a character, uh, like export care, test care, then it'll export just that single one. And again, I'll tell it where I want it to export and create an XML file for that exported character. The opposite of that is importing a character. So if we want to import a character, we can just type slash import care. And that'll open up a window, allows us to select the exported character and open it. Now that'll go ahead and import it. This was the original that's owned. This was my newly imported one. They have the same name because I just exported and imported the same in PC. Next up is the flush DB command. So flush DB stands for flush database. What this does is it removes sharing of all campaign database records. So if you've got maps shared, tables shared, story entries shared, quests, NPCs, encounters, whatever, whatever you might have shared with the players, it will go ahead and reset all of them to no longer being shared. So if you find you have a player who's having memory issues because too many things are coming his way, you can use FlushDB to wipe all of that and reset all of that. Uh, it does not remove ownership. So it's not gonna change, you know, it's not gonna wipe ownership of characters uh, or of uh, player generated notes. It doesn't change the ownership, but it will wipe what is shared with everybody. Now, next up is a save command. Fantasy Grounds by default auto saves every five minutes. Um, but if you're worried about losing something or are you worried about Fantasy Grounds crashing for whatever reason, uh, if you have something unstable, you can always just type in slash save and it will go ahead and flush all of your information and save it to your, um, to your campaign, save your campaign database so that you don't lose anything. Do a quick review to make sure we didn't miss anything here. Did I emote all of the identity out of character night uh, password? Uh, that's one we did not mention. So the password allows you to change the password for your campaign. Normally you do that again on the load or create campaign sections, but you can type password uh, to change it in the middle of a game. Say you had to boot a character who was being unruly for whatever reason, and you can change the password so that they can't reconnect. Um, if you want to reset it, you can just type password all by itself with nothing afterward, and that'll turn the password off. All right, well, that covers all of the chat commands here in Fantasy Grounds. The next video will be covering PC management, creating, importing, exporting, and managing ownership of player characters. See you next time. Thanks.